Hey everyone, it's the year is 1999. Now, a while back, I did a video counting my 10 favorite common magic items, so now I'm going to move up a step in rarity. Today we are counting down the best uncommon magic items in 5e. Now, as a note at the top of the video, these all come from the Dungeon Master's Guide. There are a lot of books out there that add, you know, all sorts of random magic items, so it's possible that I left out some interesting ones, so put your favorites in the comments. Now, number 10, the Cloak of the Manta Ray. While wearing this cloak with its hood up, you can breathe underwater and you get a swimming speed of 60 feet. Pulling the hood up or down requires an action. Now, this is a cool piece of clothing. It doesn't require concentration and gives one person the effect of the water breathing spell. The only real problem with it is, you know, how setting dependent it is. If you're doing a coastal or high seas adventure, then this could be the best item for you. On the other hand, if you're going to be tracking through a magic forest a lot, it's not going to really come in handy. Also, if you don't use an item for a while, you might forget about it when the time comes. So, it's highly specialized cloak, but, you know, when the moment comes for that highly specialized cloak, seize it. Number 9, the plus 1 weapon. You get a plus 1 bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. Now, this can be anything from a dagger to a great sword. You just add one to the d20 roll and to the damage. Seriously, that is a plus 5 accuracy to all attacks, which is good, and odds are you will get one of these fairly early on in the campaign. The only reason why it's so low on the list is that it's kind of boring on its own. Just having a weapon do a little more damage isn't that exciting. And that's why I made a whole video on making magic weapons more interesting. The link to that one is below. Yeah, seriously, the plus one weapon. Definitely a good item, but there are many better ones. Number eight, the Hat of Disguise. While wearing this hat, you can use an action to cast the Disguise Self spell from it at will, and the spell ends if the hat is removed. Now, this item gives you unlimited castings of a first level spell. Now, under normal circumstances, Disguise Self is a pretty middle-of-the-pack spell, but being able to cast it as much as you want greatly adds to the utility. Pretty much any situation where you just need to quickly pass as someone that you're not can be navigated with this hat. For instance, maybe you just want to make yourself look like a normal party-goer, or, you know, just look like you're not specifically yourself because you're being chased by the guards. Or do you want to make yourself look like one of the guards? Well, then you can pull a Princess Peach from Paper Mario and just magically make yourself look like one. And you know what? This all reminds me of one of my favorite stories as a dungeon master. One time my players were trying to thwart a mind control plot at a castle, and the chef who was trying to enchant everyone caught wind of their plan, so he had them thrown in a cell. Now Jake Actor, one of the world's greatest bards, realized that the guards weren't exactly watching him. So he disguised himself as a pregnant woman going into labor, he was able to call out to a guard to get the guard to approach a cell, which was just long enough for Farron Monroe, the mighty barbarian, to grab him through the bars and get the keys. And to clarify, Jake didn't cast any spell for this. He didn't have disguised self, to my knowledge. He was just a really good actor. How did you just do that? I'm a really good lawyer. Number 7, the Bracers of Archery. While wearing these bracers, you have proficiency with the longbow and shortbow, and you gain a plus 2 bonus to damage rolls on ranged attacks made with such weapons. Now, this is one that I don't really hear about a whole lot, but I think is really cool. It turns pretty much every normal bow into a plus 2 bow. I mean, sure, it doesn't really do magic damage or anything, but it's still pretty good. And it does require attunement, but those trade-offs are well worth it. You could give this to the row to make them really good at sharpshooting with their sneak attack damage. But I think it's more interesting to give it to, say, a monk or a druid. It gives proficiency in bows, so this can be a way to, you know, round out weapon usage. Maybe the party just shares these um, bracers based on who needs them that day. Number 6, the Winged Boots. While wearing these boots, you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. You can use these boots to fly up to four hours, either all at once or in several shorter flights, each one using a minimum of one minute, etc., etc. Now, this one gives you up to four hours of flight each day, and assuming a walking speed of 30, uh, that's about 3.41 miles of flight, 
or 6.82 miles if you dash. That doesn't sound like a lot in terms of overland travel, but the real merit comes in flying short distances. From a practical standpoint, this is unlimited combat flight. And unlike the fly spell, you don't need to concentrate. Is something stuck up in a tree? Fly up to get it. Do you need to bridge a gap? Just fly over it. Is there an enemy sharpshooter on the roof? Fly up and go attack them yourself. Boom. Fly, fly, fly. Don't use this for travel, just use this for unlimited short bursts of, you know, getting around. Number five. The Helm of Comprehend Languages. While wearing this helm, you can use an action to cast Comprehend Languages from it at will. Now, this one is sort of in the same category as the Hat of the Skies. It gives you unlimited casting of a first level spell. This spell, though, is a lot more powerful. This lets you read and understand any language in the world. Seriously, this can be anything from Blink Dog to Primordial. You don't get the ability to speak back necessarily, but it's still very useful, because it also lets you read things. So that can be anything from a logbook to a letter. You might still need to do some work to decipher things like subtext or wordplay, but that's a lot better than a completely foreign script. I mean, who needs to find the Rosetta Stone to translate Greek into Egyptian when you can just do it magically? I don't speak any other languages. I have friends that speak Spanish and French and Portuguese. I don't care. I speak English, the language Jesus spoke. <laughs> At least he did in the movie I watch. Number four, the immovable rod. This flat iron rod has a button on one end. You can use an action to press the button, which causes the rod to become magically fixed in place. Until you or another creature uses an action to push the button again, the rod doesn't move, even if it is defying gravity. So this is a stick that you can just lock into place anywhere. This one is a lot of fun to mess around with. I mean, you could use it as a post to tie an animal to. It can support a falling object. Or you can activate it while falling to catch yourself. Although, that might still require something like a strength save to maintain your grasp. But even if you do fall, if you have several of these, well, then you can use them to start climbing. Just one right up to the other. Just climb up anywhere. Number three, the decanter of endless water. This stopped flask sloshes when shaken, as if it contains water. The decanter weighs two pounds. You can use an action to remove the stopper and speak one of the three command words, whereupon an amount of fresh or salt water pours out of the flask. The water stops pouring at the end of your next turn. So this is an unlimited supply of water that can be summoned at any time in one, five, or thirty gallon increments. It might seem like I've placed this item pretty high on the list, but that's because there are so many creative uses. It can be used as a weapon. It can be used to put out fires. Or it can even be used to move things if you want. I mean, heck, is there a village in need of water? Lend them your services, either for free or charge them a little bit of money. Once you have one of these, you never have to worry about dehydration again. Although if you overuse it, I don't know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the guy that uh, drained the plane of water from all its water, but that's just me. Number two, the gauntlets of ogre power slash the headband of intellect. Your strength or intelligence scores 19 while wearing these gauntlets slash this headband, and they have no effect on you if your strength or intelligence is already 19 or higher without them. Now, these are technically two items, but they do the same thing for different stats. They set the strength or intelligence score respectively to 19. That's a plus four modifier to checks made with either of those stats. There's a few things you can do with this. You can give them both to the Eldritch Knight to make him an expert battle mage. Or you can give, say, the gauntlets to the wizard and the headband to the barbarian to boost the scores that they probably dumped. Yes, these do require attunement, but remember, you can change out your attunement every day. You could take turns wearing these if you want, based on the challenges you think you're going to face that day. Now, since carrying capacity is 15 times strength, maybe you give them to the wizard so she can carry her own supplies while traveling, and is ready in case of an ambush, and then you give them to the fighter to make his strength just a little bit better when you go into the dungeon. Seriously, just think ahead, share your magic items, I guess, would be the main point of all of this. Like, seriously, that, that's actually the takeaway from this entire video. Don't necessarily take my advice on which magic items are the best, but just learn how to share them. 
All right. Number one. Number one, the bag of holding. This bag has an interior space considerably larger than its outside dimensions, you know, roughly two feet in diameter of the mouth and four feet deep. But on the inside, the bag can hold up to 500 pounds and up to 64 cubic feet of volume. And regardless of the content, the bag itself weighs 15 pounds. Now, this is just an awesome item. It can let you carry pretty much anything you want on an adventure. You know, like, say, torches, bowling balls, other magic items. Go for it. So long as it fits through the aperture of the bag and weighs less than 500 pounds, you're golden. In fact, there's so much utility here that I made a whole other video about 30 uses for a bag of holding. Fair warning, I breathed pretty heavily on the mic in that one, but other than that, it's a fun video. It's one of my favorites. So there we go. My top picks for my favorite uncommon magic items. Which ones are your favorites? Once again, I would love to hear about that down in the comments. Um, let's see now. I, of course, also have the other video about my top 10 favorite common magic items. Um, I hope to one day do this with rare, very rare, and legendary as well. Uh, let's see now. If you want to see another video of mine talking about ideas to make new magic items, uh, how about my one for incorporating the Shengon Wu from Shaolin Showdown into D&D? Anyway, I hope that you all like this video. I'm thinking that in 2023, I'm going to be moving away from D&D a little bit and talking about the other TTRPGs that are out there. There are so many interesting ones. Let me know which ones you want me to talk about. But that's all for now. Till next time, I'm the Ares 1999 Have a great day, and God bless.